Hey guys, Kaylee here with Gardening with Bulldogs. So it is November and it is officially cold. So I think the season is over with. If you've been wondering why I haven't had a lot of videos out this year, that is because my summer consisted of weeding Bermuda grass, which is evil. We should have just a whole video on that. Watering, and I no longer have well water, so that's expensive. I had tomatoes, but very expensive tomatoes. And building my dream veggie garden. I do hate to say I did not complete it all. It is officially cold, and even if it did warm up, no, I'm good. I think it's time to go inside and do some painting projects and give myself just like a little bit of a break. I loved it all and I really did, but there's a reason why they have seasons. And I was kind of honestly disappointed in myself for not completing it because I did not want to make a part one, a part two, even though I guess I am going to be making a year one and a year two. I looked back at some of my photos and was like, Kayla, you are crazy cray. You have accomplished so much in a year and really you're never done with anything anyways. So why are you being so hard on yourself? This is what I consider to be my version of a black and white garden. And I say that because I use limestone as my gravel and that is technically in the gray family. This is not a tutorial. And I repeat that, this is not a tutorial. Please do not do it like I did. Have some patience, ask for help. Because let me tell you, it is not level. It is not straight. And things are falling over. But it is mine. It is my vision and it is wonderful. So make fun of me and my dogs as I take you through how I made my black and white veggie garden. Here is my original plan. Things did change as I went along. After having my last veggie garden further in the back, in this house I wanted to be a little closer, easier to bring in harvests. And the back area is a little more shaded so I wanted that as a nice dog run. I purchased my lumber at Lowe's. It was the severe weather 2 inch by 12 inch. I purchased 12 at 12 feet, 1 at 8 foot, and I also purchased 4 4 by 4 by 8s. There are 4 beds that are shaped like a U, so I luckily had my dad cut my lumber before heading home. He cut 4 at 9 feet, 8 at 6 feet, and 20 at 3 feet. He also cut all my 4 by 4s into foot long pieces. I am so appreciative of my family. They came down to Lowe's and helped me lift this lumber. It was wet and extremely heavy. I'm not sure if I would have been able to get it out of my truck by myself. I also purchased chicken wire and weed fabric to lay at the base of the beds. There are voles or moles around here, so that is why I purchased the chicken wire. I did regret it and pulled it out of some of the beds. I measured 20 feet from each side of the house and placed a stake. To get a nice straight line, I planned on tying string to both stakes. The word being planned. But the kiddos were having way too much fun destroying it. Knowing that I would either have to constantly fix the string because of them or put them away so they wouldn't hurt themselves, I chose to use black spray paint and make my line. I used my patio's pillar as the middle. I measured seven feet from the middle and 14 from the patio to get to my starting line. Aw, with these beds, you can really see I took my time. Made sure to dig just a little grass out for the four by four posts. I used four by four posts. I made sure to level and straighten every board. That will eventually stop. I started this project March 13th of 2022. These boards are two and a half inches, so really an inch and a half. To screw them into your four by four post, you should at least use two and a half inch screws. 
I do recommend 3 inch. These are the screws I used. I like them because I'm not really good with my drill and they made it easier. I can never screw in straight. It's also why I don't get close up shots of me using my drill. I probably would screw in straight if I faced it and didn't go about it upside down. But I also didn't want my backside facing the camera either. I have no idea why I didn't attach the back piece to the first bed before starting the second, but maybe it's just to make sure that they're both in line with each other. Also, take note of all this stuff in the background. The trees, containers, boats, buildings, all of it slowly goes away. There you go, four U-shaped perfectly level straight beds, four foot walkways, and there is exactly 14 feet in the middle between the two sets. Okay, so two mistakes here. First, just using cardboard. I should have put the weed fabric on top of the cardboard. The chicken wire is not necessary. It kept the weeds that grew up roots hard to pull out. I purchased 14 yards of compost to fill in the six total veggie beds I made. Two will be coming up. With delivery, came to $600. These next two beds are relatively easy to put together. These beds should be 22 feet long, 3 feet wide. I want them the same length as the two U-shaped beds, which are 9 feet each in length, and the walkway, which is 4. I again purchased the lumber at Lowe's Severe Weather, 2 inch by 12 inch, one at 8 foot, 8 at 12 feet, and I purchased one more 4 by 4 by 8 foot post. This time I cut the posts at 8 inches high, because it would make 12 posts, 6 posts per bed. Everything comes with its own instructions. Just follow them. I had seven of these arbors and decided they would be great to use in the veggie garden. I had to purchase one more. I wouldn't recommend and you will see why in the future, but mistakes still cost you money. These two hate the tape measure and I don't know why. I don't tease them with it. I usually have to put them away because they start screaming and it's embarrassing. I did screw in half inch clamps hoping to have extra support to the arbors. I should have used a quarter of an inch. But again, I also wouldn't recommend these arbors. I purchased these remesh sheets at Home Depot. They are 42 inches by seven feet. They are 25.88 88 a piece and I needed eight of them. The first set of these, I used wire to hang them, and then I started using zip ties. I didn't really like the rust, so I bought six cans of this Rust-Oleum Perfect Gray Color at $5.98 a can at Walmart. I'm just painting the mesh. I thought white would be too bright, even though the arbors are. I finished these arbors on May 8th. Can you see the trees in the background? They were supposed to be taken down April 8th. I took my fence down so the trucks could come in. I couldn't fill up my one side with compost just in case they had to move them. In the big bed with the arbors, I planted tomatoes, cantaloupe, and zinnias. The front left, as we're looking at it, bell peppers, basil, strawberries, chives, rosemary, and sweet potatoes. And the last bed, three kinds of potatoes. <gasps> Whiskey! Wissy, get down, right now.
Come on. Good girl. Come on. Good boy, Sandy. Good boy. Here's what your job is tomorrow. You keep her out of this garden. It's your responsibility. Hey, come back. That's the potatoes. Fast forward to July 13th, and the tree guys just are at my house when I get home from work. They moved the three garden beds and didn't exactly put them back into perfect place. Understandably so. Two days later, I finished the arbors and filling of the compost. I decided to paint the veggie beds with Rust-Oleum's Professional Flat Black Oil Base Paint, priced at $48.48 a gallon. Yep, that's 20 tons of 3 quarter inch crushed limestone, totaling $680.97 with delivery. I decided to alter the plan a notch because I wanted a walkway through the last veggie bed and the flower beds. I also believe it worked better with the fencing I bought. I'm measuring out the border for the fence and the flower beds. With gardening dogs, again, better for me to spray paint along the string so I can remove the string and still have a straight line. I decided to start the black metal fence in the middle and go all the way to the wood fence. The fencing I purchased was off of Facebook for a screaming deal of $10 a panel, including the post. One problem, the post didn't have any of the pointy in-ground piece, so I purchased four three quarter of an inch pipes, 10 feet long, and my dad cut them into six inches in length. This is how he cut my first batch of lumber too. Thanks dad. To install this fence, I just dug in with my hori hori knife, put in the six inch piping, and used a mallet to push them into the ground. I'm not gonna lie, to some of you, this would be an unnecessary step but I made so many changes to my original plan that I didn't trust my math. And I'm glad that I put up this fence first before I built the flower beds that will go in front of them because I was off in the back portion. I have about six inches of extra weed fabric by the fence so I can overlap with more weed fabric before I lay my gravel down. I will calculate all weed fabric later in the video. The next set of lumber I purchased for my flower beds were two 4x4x12 four by four by foot posts at 2018 a piece, 28 one and a quarter inch by 6 inch by 10 foot at 888 a piece, and then for my sides of the veggie bed, one inch by four inch by 10 feet, I had bought eight boards at 678 a piece. My total purchase was $343.24. I had my dad cut my 4x4 posts to 3 feet and they are used at the ends of the beds. I had my dad cut a lot of my lumber because my circular saw is on its last leg. Now this is where I got a little cheap and instead of using 4x4 posts to connect my boards together, I used 3x5 inch 20 gauge galvanized tie plates for 98 cents a piece. It sounded like a good idea at the time. But I These flower beds are 3 feet wide and about 30 feet long but they are only 6 inches deep. I'm only painting this side of the flower beds because the outward facing sides will get veneer stone. The plan is to lay four inches of limestone gravel down as my base to the veggie garden. I don't want to cut out all that grass. That is why I built these beds and put up sides. But I also don't want to step up into the garden. So I'm creating a slope in both entryways to the garden to achieve this. I did spray the grass with Roundup twice I used 400 feet of weed fabric, all four foot wide, but with a mixture of fabrics. All of the fabric costed $204.88. I bought 650 staples costing $84.41. And even though I pulled out the chicken wire, it still cost me $77.96. 
totaling $391.22. Stanley, get out of the tomatoes. <laughs> no. Other than my dad cutting my lumber, I did everything myself. I was offered help, but I did decline it because this was my mountain I had to climb myself. One woman, one wheelbarrow that I did go by because I did one pathway with my garden cart and said, nope, I'm buying a wheelbarrow. One shovel that the tip broke off, one metal rake, and I guess I'll give two English Bulldogs some credit, moved 20 tons of gravel to make a dream come true. Fence goes back up. I didn't buy gates, I just used two fence panels having the post be the lock. It gives me a six foot gate. Has anybody been wondering what the plan is for the three foot posts? Well first making sure that they are level, and at the corners of the garden I'm making flower containers to attract the pollinators. And in the center, at each entryway, I'm making solar powered fountains. I purchased these solar powered bird bath fountains on Amazon for $11 a piece. I like these particular ones because they were lights that changed, but also the battery would charge a little extra for a few hours of night usage. They all died within 10 days. I already had the plastic bowls I purchased online from the web restaurant store. I did add fake green ivory on the bottom to hide the gap. $10 for 12 strands from Amazon. I came home from a slightly windy day to this. I will be replacing these arbors. I've seen some arbors made of rebarb on Pinterest and I want to try, but that will be next year. I've already purchased the rebarb and will add the price in next year's video. I had a very beautiful 70 degree weekend and thought I would try to put the veneer stone I brought from my previous garden on the cut flower beds. The last time I attached the stone, it was on cinder blocks. This time would be wood. I applied my scratch coat on and let it sit for 12 hours came outside the next day to it have fallen off. Realized the wood was too smooth. I removed any mortar that was still attached and sanded the wood with coarse sandpaper. Then I took my 5-in-1 and really roughed up the surface. I wasn't able to do any more because the cold is officially staying. But here's a little glimpse of what it will look like. I don't believe I mentioned I purchased another 10 yards of compost for $400 to fill in the flower beds and top off the others. My grand total so far for this black and white vegetable garden is $5,098.24. I didn't add tax because every state is different. I'm not planning on adding in the price of statues or the other solar powered lights I have. I should mention I have soaker hoses in my beds, but I didn't calculate that in as well. Well, there you have it, my black and white veggie garden year one. Have a little left to do next year, fix the arbors, the veneer stone, and there is an arbor around the statue I wanna put up. Maybe a greenhouse, maybe. I hope this video taught you a little something, whether it give you an idea or learn not to do it the way I did. You are capable of achieving your goals.